Hey everyone, 8Bishop here. Um, today we are featuring a deck that I have named uh, Bust a Move. It is a deck built around moving your units around. It's one of my favorite decks to play in the game. It's not the best deck in the format, but it can have some really swingy fun games. And uh, sometimes you're not looking for the thing that's going to win every time. You're looking for the thing that's going to be fun to play. And if that's the case, this might be the deck for you because it is a ton of fun to play. So uh, we're running Ant-Man because it's really easy to wind up with a a full space or two in this deck, uh, especially if you get multiple mana early. Uh, Iceman for good tempo. Iron Fist because we want the movement effects. Nightcrawler because it is more flexible on movement effects. Okoye because of her interactions with multiple man. Um, we're playing Armor because we we recommend that there's some type of counterplay for uh, Nova in your deck, and Armor is our decision for that because it doesn't counter any of our own strategies. Um, we're running multiple man. Uh, this is one of the bread and butter cards for movement abilities. You'll note I'm not running Sabretooth. I don't think Sabretooth is consistent enough unless you have a lot of cards that enable you to move. And it just doesn't feel like there's enough of those. Um, I've played with Sabretooth a bit and it just never felt like it got more than like four power. And four power for two is okay, which is why people play Medusa. But the fact that it can't even consistently get that high uh, just wasn't worth it. Uh, Cloak. However, you know, is a thing that enables movement abilities and has four power, very strong unit for us. Doctor Strange for its movement ability. Vulture is arguably the strongest card in the deck besides multiple man because um, you move this around twice and people just aren't beating it ever. Um, Hulkbuster, um, not only because we wind up with a lot of full slots, but if Hulkbuster attaches to multiple man when multiple man moves, it moves with those extra stats and then Heimdall to top it all off. Uh, my win rate with this deck is something like a 60 to 70% win rate. Uh, we're going to play a handful of games, and uh, just whatever I get in those games is what you'll get to see. But um, I can tell you I um, definitely have a positive win rate with the deck. I don't keep the best count of everything I play with, uh, but I've played with this a lot, and I know for a fact that I win with it more than I lose with it, which is why I'm willing to estimate a 60 to 70%. Um, one of the most awkward things about this deck though is um, you really want to set yourself up in the further over spaces to be able to move multiple man as much as possible so you get do you get stuck playing blind um, which is a bit risky in this case we're going to play blind this way because it's in Mr. London um, and we have a cloak to follow up with which is nice um, but if you get a location that really punishes you for playing something there immediately it can be really unfortunate Okay, um, let's go ahead and just slam this Vulture down. The Miniaturized Lab definitely made this an interesting play. I think we're actually going to go ahead and just take advantage of this double Okoye. It means we're not going to be able to use Cloak for the game, though, if we do that. Because we're not going to be able to set up at Miniaturized Lab. I think it's worth it. Our Vultures are never going to do anything in this game, though. This is a really awkward game. The, the worst thing about this deck, in my opinion, is um, you get put in these situations where... All it takes is a location with disruption, right? It takes, like, you know, here's Raptors, here's a Mantra's Lab, here's... Um, nowhere is not as disruptive as long as it's um, not on the far right. Um, but in general, there's a lot of locations that can disrupt movement in some degree, and if any of those come out, your deck has a really big disadvantage, which I think is the thing that hurts its um, consistency the most. Now, you are going to see here this Hulkbuster is going to merge with something, and then whatever it merges with is going to be what you get a copy of in another location. So the really cool thing about this is, like, if I get the Okoye, I get another Okoye ability. Um, if I get the multiple man, um, th and later we'll remove that multiple man, then that multiple man gets extra stats. Um, but movement abilities are not something we're going to be able to benefit from here. Uh, for the rest of the game, we're just out of spaces except for Minitrius Lab. Um, and the one Sinister London that we have.
that ended up being really, really good for us because we can move this Okoye here. So I think what we do is we do this and this. Eight more there, but this is a tie. Yeah, we're basically just hoping to win this by a lot, I think is our plan. Uh, they won theirs by a lot more than we won ours, though, so we lose. <laughs> All right. I would love to put a, a dagger in this deck, for sure. I just don't have dagger yet. I think having a dagger for a third thing that likes to be moved around is going to be a, a big deal for the deck as a whole. As far as consistency goes, we're definitely just gonna wait here because we can go vulture into um, into strange and get um, a pretty strong unit pretty early. The raptors are super annoying for us, though. And that's what I'm saying. So, like, anything that clutters up the spaces or makes the spaces um, not interactable just make this deck function a lot more poorly. I guess if I do this, then... I need to make sure that I can actually move the Vulture later. Yeah. We're going to throw an armor down here in case they are playing a um, a Nova deck. Because at this point, this is the space they're going to want a Nova. They, and they can still Savage Land it if they don't put something here. But um, I'm forcing their hand a little bit because they want to have a lot of stuff out. And if they're forced to have different stuff in Clintar, it's going to be rough for them. Okay, we're definitely just going to Doctor Strange here so that Heimdall can keep on moving our Vulture. And I think we're pretty happy playing an Iceman now. Oh, I guess by playing an Iceman there instead of here, we just stopped ourselves from moving Vulture, didn't we? Crap. I misplayed. It's all right, though. Do this, this. Moves our Ant Man over here. Okay, this is awkward. What's going to happen is they're going to. Play Odin here, get a tiger here, win here, lose here, and then we still lose. We need a retreat.
Like I said, it's not the most consistent deck, but it's fun to play. <laughs> Uh, we'll just start with a Nightcrawler in a unidentified space, I think. And then go ahead and Akoye here. All right, this early multiple man is not bad for us at all. Let's go ahead and do this and that. Oh, interesting. I think we'd rather do this then. And that's a pull multiple man to here, and then we can cloak to pull um, a multiple man from here and from here to Murder World. And so there's a chance that they're setting up a Nova here, and we have really good counterplay for that Nova if we want to play the armor. Um, now, if we're not worried about Nova, we can play Vulture instead. I think even if they have double Nova, we're okay because of the Vulture and the overall stats. We're going to ignore it. We're not going to respect it, even though we should potentially respect it. Yeah, they're going to a Dinosaur play anyway. And then we go one, two, three, and that gets nice and big. That will still have a unit in it. Oh no, we don't want to play that because then we lose our multiple man. Yeah, we just do that. We should be big enough to win center. Yeah, see, we're big enough to win center. That's a better example of a good game for the deck. <laughs> Let's get one more in there, see if we can at least hit a 50-50 win rate. Kuhn Moon, while I'm playing the movement deck, is actually massive. As long as this location doesn't dick us, we're in a really, really good spot. Oh, yikes. Now I can't play my full combo, though. That's annoying. 
Okay. We'll just do this now, then. Yeah, I, I lost out on the ability to Hulk bust the multiple mana because of the Dark Dimension, which isn't the worst thing in the world, but it's, it is annoying. I think we'll still snap, though. And sorry, I think I heard the door. <sighs> really sound, sound like someone knocked on the screen. Okay, then. Wait a minute. What happened here? Um, I guess. Why would you start it there? I'm so confused. We just play this here, yeah. They're definitely winning center. We're definitely winning left. It's just if we win right or not. I guess they wanted the flexibility of moving vision. That's why they played vision there. That's not enough. We still win left. Cool. Yeah, Kuhn Luna on the far left is like the dream for this deck. You can see how a lot of locations can make it really awkward for us to play it correctly, though, which is why it just can't be a high tier deck. But yeah, that's Bust the Move. It's a lot of fun to play. Uh, don't recommend playing it necessarily to grind a ladder, but when you just need a brain break and want to try something different, give it a try. It's a lot of fun, and it can have some really good wins, and um, if the location of the week is something that is at least neutral for you, then feel like playing it a little bit more. Um, but just go in keeping in mind that locations can really hurt you and you get stuck playing blinds a lot if you want to set up effectively, which is a major point of the deck.